Sometimes I think about the things that you do in your life and the variation of difficulty and desire between them. What I mean by that is you have several things that you like to do and you choose to do because they are things that you care about. They are things that you want to fulfill, practice, or get done. However, your capacity, your desire, and your, and your willingness to do them is not equal. And the reason I see it that way, the reason I think that is the case, doesn't have to do exactly with how complicated they are. Rather, it has to do with how hesitant you are at doing them. Sometimes you find yourself hesitating due to harsh self-criticism. You, you worry about the way you think of yourself when you do them. You worry too much about the outcome. And you feel yourself shrinking before you get to do them. While on the other hand, different things that may not be less complicated or less difficult, you find yourself doing constantly. You do not stop them. You're maybe dedicated, maybe you're disciplined, or maybe they have been ingrained into your habitual um, behavior. They became habits. And I've been wondering how come you find yourself resisting doing things that you want to do, yet you always curve away from them. And you go and do the thing that has lesser, lesser resistance, the thing that isn't as terrifying to your psyche. And the more I think about it, the more I realize that it's internal. The reason you struggle to do these things happens entirely in your head. It isn't difficult as a process. It isn't complicated as a thing that requires motor skills or knowledge or high uh, eye hand coordination. No, no, no. It's something that you can do with ease. Uh, it's something that is accessible to you, yet somehow you shy away and do the things that you're used to do. So let's talk for a bit about why we behave this way. Why do we resist? Rather, there is resistance. Why do we shy away from this resistance and go towards the things that we know we can do without so much heavy weight on our minds or maybe conscious? Hmm. I think the battle that's happening, that's making you unable to do such a thing, is self-inflicted. You worry too much. What is going to happen if I do it? How badly will it turn out to be? Think, think of it this way. Think about, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of creative people deal with this. Think about someone who wants to do art, someone who wants to sit down and draw. They get filled with several factors of resistance in their heads. They think, hey, maybe it's going to turn out to be bad. Maybe it's going to be a testament to how I think of myself, which is I'm not good enough. Um, what will people think of it? What if it comes out in a bad way? Maybe it's going to come out as something that represents you poorly. And those are legitimate concerns. You do worry about those things. You do think that if, if such a thing happens, then you're not in in a good place. You go to a bad place and it's going to make you feel worse. And then after that, you're going to dislike yourself. 
all the negative thoughts in your head will manifest into reality and you will see the poor execution that you know in your head will eventually happen become real and then it's confirmed and these negative thoughts are solidified huh. despite the fact that i really believe that what you think you become like so much of your reality is indeed shaped by your thoughts and your thoughts aren't exactly who you are they just are let's say coming from somewhere and they influence the way you think i mean they are your thoughts after all um <clears throat> but they are not you per se um if you change your thoughts you become different you think differently you act differently you speak differently for example let's say you have those negative thoughts that you're you shouldn't do this or you want to do it but the resistance is stopping you let's say you push through and you decide you know what i think this way but i will do it anyway and i will rough through it i don't know if it's rough through it muscle through it wrestle with it whatever so you go through it the results whatever they may be you internalize the thought that hey whatever the outcome is i want to do it so that i can practice the muscle that pushes against this form of resistance just so that i can do it more frequently and also so that i can get better at doing this thing at facing the big bad in my head facing the more difficult choices instead of resorting to the easier ones now again the thoughts themselves say i'm going to be bad i'm not going to succeed this will turn out poorly and you're doing something else you're saying i don't care about these thoughts i don't care that i believe this way i will def I, i will i will defy what i think and what i believe just so that i can reach a goal that i aim to reach a goal that i aim towards so let's say now here's the thing life is life is complex i'll i'll say it that way i don't want to say life is tough life is beautiful because life is everything it's it has the the ugly and the good the ugly and the beautiful the tough and the easy but life is complex and anything you can think you can become and i know i already said that and anything that you change in your thoughts you can alter and therefore you can become something else you can go beyond the limitations that your mind imposes on you and by that i know i know that sounds like uh, um i know that sounds melodramatic but the point i mean is when you think i can't do it this is too much i'll never get good i'll never um reach that stage that i wish to reach and i dream of um i will never turn out the way i wish to be or rather even i will definitely turn out poorly and badly and i view myself in a bad light those limitations are there you can reprogram your mind into wow i'm i'm if if you're just listening to this i'm motioning as if i'm fixing a rubik cube although it's it's there's nothing i'm just moving my hands in the air you reprogram your thoughts and you unplug some of them and plug new ones and you get your conscious mind to influence your subconscious thoughts and you push through until you reaffirm your new thoughts or you defy the old ones even if they get affirmed into something real like for example as i said you do it and it turns out poorly and you decide you know what i don't care how it turns out i'm doing this for totally different reasons i'm doing this so that i can practice so so that i can overcome that fear that's stopping me from trying and god knows so many of us 
fear trying because we have this tiny nihilistic thought. I was going to say tiny nihilistic person, but nihil- tiny nihilistic thought that says, you know what? It's not worth it. Don't do it. Just, just be average. Just hide. Don't poke your head out. It's embarrassing. People will look at you. People will laugh at you. Or you're going to look at yourself and you're going to laugh at yourself. And even if, let's say, someone says, I don't care what people think, even if you don't, even even if you genuinely don't, don't, and I do think some people really don't, the negativity that you worry about exposing yourself to can affect you. Yes, it's it's a very good reason that you don't want to expose yourself to it. Here's here's let's let's paint a picture. <clears throat> let's say you or an imaginary person goes out, does something, and um, a lot of people are impressed. Way more people are indifferent. And just one stranger, one person who you will never meet again, who, whom you will not care what they think, they go and say something negative to you or about you or about the thing that you do. Although usually people don't judge the actions, even if they actually do, but they criticize the person doing the actions. They will say, hey, you're bad. You're, what the hell are you doing? And maybe they even antagonize you for being different or acting differently. We're acting weirdly. And and let me do air quotes here. Acting weirdly according to them, even though we live at, uh, we live in a time where it's really hard to do something that's labeled weird unless you live in a culture, a society that, you know, um, can view things outside of its norm as weird. Now, that person, that comment, even if you say, oh, I don't care what they think, it will linger there in the back of your head and you will convince yourself that you don't care, but you will still care. Um, I can think of a, I can think of an example. All right. I don't know if you relate to this, but try to imagine it with me. Let's say you do something to your hair. You let it grow out, for example. And this is something new to you. Again, imagine. I'm not saying this is real. Let's say you're, you're used to a certain hairstyle and you do something different to it. Uh, in the example, you let it grow and someone just approaches you or meets you or you know just throws a comment saying oh my god long hair looks bad on you you look so much better with short hair you look way older with long hair or that they just toss this opinion they have of the way your hair looks and they toss it as if they have every right to tell you that hey you know what i don't like the way you look change it but obviously they don't say change it they just tell you that and and sometimes maybe they think they're doing you a service by pointing that out hey you don't look so good change that now even if you were convinced that you like the way your hair looks now that thought is there now you're gonna be wondering maybe even one percent two percent hey maybe maybe my hair does look bad maybe i do look better the way I used to have my hair uh, done. And even if you manage to ignore that and you forget about it, and I I still think the thought will remain in in the back of your head. You tell me if you think so or not. Um, If anyone else mentions it again, and I'm, and I'm saying even a hundred, if a hundred people tell you they love your hair and just one person already said it doesn't look good. If just another person mentions it, you will feel negative. You will feel, hey, what the, hey, don't, don't talk. You you will become defensive. You'll be like, no, you don't know what you're saying. No, I love my hair. I, you have to affirm that you, you feel like you have to affirm it. I'm not saying you will. Um, and 
you at least, at the very least, you will not feel just as good about the way it looks. Now, I know I drifted off topic for a bit here, but the point is, when you find resistance to do something you wish to do more, uh, you wish to do more consistently, let's say, that resistance really, uh, it's hindering, I know, but that resistance really needs you to focus on pushing through more than you trying to figure out why the hell you don't do it, which probably it's the same thing, but I, I want to uh, I want to give it this narrative just thinking I, I think that this narrative will help deliver the point. Um, instead of wondering why you're not doing it and you start feeling negative about it, you start seeing it that in, in this light, hey, I know this, this resistance is there because I have those worries. I, I think and I know because we usually say I know and our knowledge is always limited. Um, even people in science, scientists, when they say they know, they say the evidence suggests. They, they never know. We never know. There's always change in, in our knowledge, um, in our database, let's say. So you say I know that if I do this, it's going to turn badly and I'm not going to like it and I'm not, I'm not going to feel good about myself. So change that narrative or rather redefine the narrative into, you know what? I want to push through. I want to do this more often. I want to, like a muscle, I want to keep practicing, keep doing this, keep being bad. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I fail and reach a point at least where the rusted gears start to move again because that's what's happening this this is a gear that you want to move but the resistance kept getting stronger and i would i would say the resistance is an analogous to rust on this gear and the rust just kept growing and growing and and it became so powerful that it's it's really tremendous just to move this gear once so you get to you have to repeatedly fight against it until this this rusted gear starts moving again um and don't be harsh on yourself even if you fail to attempt that's okay don't be harsh on yourself it's okay if you curve over and over and you choose to do things that are easier rather than this thing. And again, easier in terms of there is no resistance to doing them. Sometimes those things that you do more frequently are not easier, not at all. However, to, to your psyche, to your thoughts, they're not as mentally challenging. They're not as, uh, how do I say this? You wouldn't struggle to feel good about yourself doing them as much as you would about the things that have built rust resistance. Hmm. And I really believe that practice, repetition, I really believe that they are one of the best methods to get good at something, to overcome barriers even. And now it's it's really easy to um, refute that statement and say, no, some things you cannot really practice or do repeatedly. If you do them, they will cause, let's say, irreversible results. Meaning, meaning let's, let's go with examples here. I think examples will help deliver the point. Um, let's say you want to do extreme sports and um, you cannot practice them on the extreme level um, because there's a high chance that you will hurt yourself or there's a high chance that you will not get the uh, get to the point where you'll be able to get better now maybe extreme sports is a bad example um, but th the point is 
four things that I would I would call them um, four things that are harmless. Let's say things that will not hurt you, things that will not hurt anyone else, and they will not cause any damage. You want to practice a hobby. You want to do something creative. You want to write a book, whatever it may be. Doing those things, it's really the best way to practice. And also the idea behind practice, although the main idea is you improving and getting better. Another idea behind practice is you allow yourself to fail. You allow yourself to do poorly. You allow yourself the chance to try and see where your errors are, where your flaws are. And let's say you're allowed to critique yourself. However, critique is dangerous. I'm not saying it's bad. Critique is necessary, but it's also dangerous. Here's why. And I probably mentioned why, but let's, let's just make sure it's clear why critique can be dangerous. Critique can hurt you so much that you stop. Um, for example, let's say you set the mo- you set the motive that you want to do it to practice. You know you will do poorly. You know you will probably fail many times. But critique can hurt your the way you feel about yourself, the way you feel about what you're doing. You 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 might feel that hey you're wasting your time. You're bad at this. You're terrible. This is a mistake. Maybe this isn't for you. And that's that's a whole other topic, but let's not go there now. And critique just tells you that, hey, you're just running in circles here. You're not gonna get anywhere. Just quit. This is maybe this isn't for you. Um and you then quit because the overburdening negativity of feeling that stops you completely. But Here's some, I would say, healing light that I think you should shed on this thing, um, attempting to practice and allowing yourself to fail. It's okay. Fail. Try. Enjoy the process. I think many of us start something, um, especially with creative things, um, start it with love, with enjoyment in mind, enjoyment. We started with enjoyment in mind and somewhere along the way we hit the Dunning-Kruger curve where we go up and we're like, wow, we're great. This is fun. I'm enjoying myself. And then you learn more and then you plummet down and you are in the, is it called the valley of despair? Where you realize just how bad you are. You realize how much of a beginner you are and you realize that hey i'm terrible how how was i feeling good about all the things that i used to make all the things that i used to do and that valley of despair takes a while like man you can't stay there for a long time until you start to rise back up and and slowly you're humbled obviously slowly realize that, hey, this is a grind. This is something that I have to get good at and I have to practice and I have to learn and I have to get better. It's it's a long process. And those things are good. You need to practice. You need to learn. You need to be humble. You need to be aware of your flaws and of, of the field that you're dealing with. However, somewhere in that valley of despair, let's go back a little bit, Somewhere in that valley of despair, you drop the element that really made you start. You drop the reason that you began doing this thing. You drop enjoying it. You dropped having fun. It stopped being spontaneous and uh, lighthearted and fun and something that you, with a childlike spirit, get to do. You're now this boring, rigid adult that has to get good and that is bad and any mistake is unforgivable. You know, it's it's becoming really harsh. Now, balance is always good. Moderation is key. You need a moder- uh, you need a moderate amount of criticism, a moderate amount of discipline, a moderate amount of 
maybe even uh, tenacity. Um, and it's okay to sprinkle some extremes here and there, like, uh, you know, go crazy for a while, get motivated. Motivation feels like this burst of energy. That's okay from time to time. But don't get over-consumed by criticism that you stop. It hurts you too much. And don't ignore it altogether that you become so blinded to your mistakes, you never, you don't learn. You're just, just goofing around. And, and don't, definitely don't forget to enjoy the process and to have fun. Now, just a final message, and I will say this in Arabic. العون الأخيرة جدا مجالس السجل للأمانة من الصعاب اللي كنت أواجهها مع تسجيل البودكاست والفيديو هذه هو نفس الموضوع اللي تكلمت فيه في الفيديو هذا ألا وهو مواجهة صعوبة ومواجهة يعني كيف أقول ريزيستنس أنا سميتها بالفيديو مواجهة مقاومة بأنك تكمل أو أو تمارس الشيء هذا وأعترف والكلام هذا أردي قلته هنا أعترف أن كمية انتقاد الذات اللي واجهتها مع نفسي كانت جدا عالية لدرجة أني خلاص قلت أو ما قلت يعني أكون صريح مع نفسي تجنبت أني أجلس وأسجل أشغلت نفسي بأمور أخرى مهمة وتهمني ولها قيمة ومفيدة وصحية وكل ذلك ولكن كل ما جيت أبي أسوي هذا الشيء الأصعب ألاقي نفسي أميل لل... للي فيهم مقاومة أقل من شيء مثل البودكاست أو مثل التسجيل هنا ولكن الإنسان يحاول ويسعى ويتقبل مواجهات إنسانيته يعني كلنا نواجه هذه المشاكل كلنا نسعى ونتعب ونشعر بالخذلان والفشل وأحيانا أفكارنا السلبية هي اللي تطقى علينا وتخلينا نتجنب حتى أننا نواجهها ولكن يعني تذكر أن هذه الأشياء هذه الأمور كل الناس تمر فيها وهي شيء طبيعي جدا هو وهي جزء من من وهي جزء من مراحل تطورك في الحياة وتحسنك في الحياة حتى على سبيل المثال في تسجيلي لهذا الفيديو بيني وبين نفسي شفت أن مهم أكثر أني أسجله وأصنع هذا المحتوى مهم أكثر من أني أسلك لنفسي وأقول لا خلاص مو لازم بالمواجهة بين هذه الأفكار السلبية اللي تقول لي مو لازم عادي تقدر تعوض بأشياء أخرى تقدر تسوي أشياء أخرى مع أن داخلي ودي أسوي شيء هذا آه، هذا الشعور أو هذه الأفكار لأن الشعور سلبي لازال هذه الأفكار غلبت الأفكار السلبية آه، ولعل هذا السبب أني سجلت الفيديو هذا أو التسجيل هذا آه، وختاما شكرا على استماعكم Thank you for listening. I really hope this was useful and helpful. And yeah, have a good night or a good day. Take care.